All right, welcome back, everyone, to Leisure Bowl in Albuquerque, New Mexico, opening match. Boy, history does repeat itself. These two young ladies are bowling each other for the third time here in the fall in the championship round, and uh, guess what? The score is one-to-one, -one, so this is the rubber match. Well, the first time we saw him was in Hammond, and uh, Nikki lost to Leanne, 235 to 247. Leanne won that title, and uh, just last week, for those viewers, saw Nikki beat Leanne 191 to 169 for that title. I was going to say, this must be anticlimactic. They're bowling in the opening match here. One of the two of them used to being a top seed. So Leanne Barrett on the championship round pair of 23 and 24. A bit light with the first shot as she leaves the two pin. Leanne really having a very successful fall season, as well as actually a whole year. Just been bowling superbly, though, this fall. It's like, uh, what to telecast without Leanne Barrett? Well, the youngster from Oklahoma City is first in average, first in points, and second in money, although after this week she'll now head past uh, Tish Johnson, regardless of where she finishes tonight. She'll be the LPBT's leading money winner heading into LA, LA next week. It's been a real dogfight for that top spot. And uh, Nikki Giannullius trying to win two in a row. Nikki defending her title just last week in Houston. Uh, really having a rough time of it this year. We've seen uh, her finish second a number of times in the past few years, and she was able to break that uh, last week and come out with the title. Boy, if there is one big difference for Nikki this year, Leila, it's the fact she's been able to you know, record some wins in the championship round. She's 8-4 and four this year, and to give you an idea of what we're talking about, she's 38-41 and 41 lifetime, so up until this season, she'd been struggling. Take a look at Nikki's game. Now, four-step approach actually pushes the ball a little bit early before her footwork. Now, she's been working with Charlie Tapp and also Eddie Veltri in her footwork and timing and says it's finally all come together for her. As you can see there, she really raises through the ball. Powerful player indeed. Said the key this week was to set the ball down a little short and get it rolling as soon as possible. The lanes were a little tighter for Nikki this week than they have been in the past. Nikki, really one of the only players on the telecast, that started out the tournament in the in lower positions. After the first round, she was in 44th. Uh, going into last night, she was in 12th. So uh, she said she made a couple changes, trying to get around the ball a little bit more uh, with her hand position, and uh, it enabled her to carry and get a little bit uh, straighter line to the pocket. Won seven of eight matches last night, including the critical position bound win over uh, Jeannie Maiden, as you see her take the two right off the eight there to qualify for the number five position, but she is the first one to open here in match number one. Let's see if Leanne can take advantage. Well, key for any of the players this week, Denny, really was match play because the scores were very high, and uh, when you start uh, losing matches with uh, big games, you don't make the telecast. X marks the spot for Leanne Barrett in the second, and uh, of course, last year this championship was on a, uh, a different network, and uh, I obviously was not involved in doing the show, and I ran up to Leanne and said, Leanne, did you bowl a, a decent game in the title match here last year? And she said, Denny, I started with the first nine and needed a spare in the tenth to beat Dana Miller-Mackey. That's right. The score uh, that or last year was 279 to 269. It was an exciting match. Dana Miller at that time uh, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, basically the hometown favorite, but Leanne really had all the fans rooting her on to try to shoot that 300 game. Leanne Barrett with a double in the second and third, now takes a 23-pin lead over Nikki Giannullius, who has uh, opted to re-rack for the first time on lane 24. Players allowed two re-racks per game. All right, call uh, the tournament direct director, Fran Wolf, in. Of the players out here on the national tour, does Nikki Giannullius have an itchy trigger finger? She seems to re-rack quite a bit. Well, occasionally, uh, <laughs> certain tournaments, you become uh, the re-rack -re queen, we say. And uh, I know I've done it a few few events. I felt that way. And you know you're in trouble when you build up a callus on that index finger, right? Well, I saw her throw a great shot in uh, the practice time. And she left an 8-10. And I'm sure she's really looking over uh, the pins. Well, if you take a look at that shot, uh, the ball really deflected to the right. She was lucky not to leave the 8-10 again. So Nikki Giannullius right now not getting the type of reaction that she would like. So she's struggling here on the championship pair of 23 and 24. The players all week playing an inside line right around the track area, the, setting the ball anywhere around the 
15th to the 12th board, breaking point actually all the way out to the 8th board. And I said, you know, what was the key for you since I wasn't able to play the lanes? You know, I, it was up to them to tell me what they were doing. And they mm -hmm. said, you know, actually we just had to move left, get in the oil, set the ball in the oil, but project it to the dry. And that was for the best carry. Try and find the spot where the break point was going to be most advantageous. She trails by 23. In the early stages here of match number one, Wendy McPherson will take on the winner. Donna Adamick is the number two seed, and Lisa Wagner on the top of the stack this week as Nikki G strikes in the fourth frame. We'll be back with more of the opening match here in the $40,000 Hammer Western Open right after these messages. And while we were away, Leanne Barrett walked up and threw strikes in the fourth and the fifth, Lee Isla. She's now working on a four-bagger and leads by 43 as we take a look at that uh, strike in the fourth. Well, make it the fifth. Leanne's game, she takes that four-step approach, low push, and uh, as she comes back, you can see there that she carries uh, the 10 pin. A little slap from the six. Mm -hmm. So it's four in a row for Leanne Barrett. Time for Nikki G to get things started. And she's trying to rise to the occasion, but she leaves that soft 10 again on lane 24. Leila, what do you do when you've thrown two pretty good shots and the ball is just not reacting? Well, they were pretty good shots, Denny, but the ball, as you can see, just was not quite uh, driving hard enough to get the 10 out. She really needs to project the ball a little bit sooner into the dry or move a board or two to the right with her feet. Okay. Try to get a little bit more of an angle into the pocket. All right, so a spare up in the fifth. But uh, spares, I don't think, are going to be enough against Leanne Barrett, who has uh, started spare four-bagger here in the opening game. Leanne Barrett having two titles from that fourth and fifth position coming up the ladder. So uh, she is familiar with having to do it. It's a very difficult thing to do. Nikki Jean Ulias, after that win last week, has now moved up to the number six position all-time in earnings, better than $326,000. A little more direct with that shot, and uh, so she comes up with a strike in the sixth, but she's obviously liked the left-hand lane a little more than the right lane. Well, her second consecutive strike now on lanes 23. As you can see here, the line she's playing around the 12th board, the ball breaking in around the 8th board, and a uh, nice uh, carry. And now back to live action. Leanne Barrett opts for a re-rack on lane 24. So we'll have to see what uh, is bothering the ladies down there. Something must not be on spot. High shot, and she leaves the four pin. I guess if those pins are off, what, a quarter of an inch, Leila? Can you see it if it's a quarter of an inch or half an inch? I don't think I could. <laughs> I wear contacts. I probably couldn't see it if it was five feet in front of me. No, it's very uh, difficult to A lot of players to do detect. that, don't they? Oh, sure. Yeah. And if you don't feel comfortable with the rack you're shooting at, uh, if you do have the availability to take a look at ten fresh ones, you might as well. A lot of times you just look at it in reference to the other pins. I mean, you may not notice what pin is off spot exactly, but in reference to the other pins, it just doesn't look right. Mm-hmm. 